Waking up at an ungodly time, even when you had very little sleep, is the hardest thing in photography. Concentrating on the goal and the excitement of experiencing something new is what doesn't let me press the snooze button. The goal today? To photograph and document the wildlife in the area surrounding my home. Well, that is the greater goal. Today specifically, filming the storks I saw feeding on the roadside farmlands while driving to work. Autumn has come and they seem to be flocking together preparing for their long journey south. Why the baby cart and the bike instead of a car? Motor vehicles are not allowed on many of the roads around farmlands. Getting close to the birds and covering ground if they are hard to find is easiest by bike. This means a one hour ride to get to the place I saw the birds before and hoping that they are still in the same spot. The sun hasn't come up yet and it's still dark. The animals I take b-roll of seem to be just as sleepy as I am while they anxiously watch me from afar. They are always alert and ready to take off around here. They do not trust humans. But that is understandable since these hunting lookouts aren't just for show. But I can't waste too much time on this. I got to get to the spot before the sun comes up so I leave them alone and ride on. All the fuffing around with the b-roll and taking a wrong turn causes me to be late but I'm still hoping that I might find my subject before the heat of the sun starts beating down. I feel all week that by the time I can have my little adventure they would have flown off on their long journey so I got really sad when the field they were hanging out before was all empty by the time I got there. The only thing left was this bird of prey and he also didn't want to stick around for me, took off for the nearest tree the moment I appeared. Anywhere I looked, I couldn't seem to find them. Tired and feeling sorry for myself, but also angry at myself for letting this chance slip away, I decided to head home, but first I needed a rest and a hot drink. I decided to take a different route home than the one I came on, and I got lucky by doing this as I spotted the pack of storks on another meadow. As a bonus, a bunch of grey herons and great egrets were also hunting on this field doing their usual dance. I was afraid that they would also fly away if I got too close, so I stopped my bike behind a large bush and carefully inched forward to the edge with my tripod to film them, sticking my camera out just above the grasses. Because of the distance, I used my 200 to 500 with the 1.7x teleconverter and the 1 to 1 readout feature of the Z9 with the 2.3x crop getting me a whopping 1980mm effective focal length. But this seems like a good idea and might have worked if I was there earlier, it was now almost 9 o'clock and the sun started beating down fiercely on the lens, heat waves started to form in the fore and background making some of the footage useless and really testing the camera autofocus. Most of the storks at this point seemed to be done with hunting for breakfast and were doing maintenance on their plumage which is a pity, I hope to film their hunt. Only one guy seemed to have not been up early and was still looking for food. Based on the frequency it was picking up and swallowing, the prey must have been these slugs. Nothing else is so abundant on these feeds except for insects maybe. The herons on the other hand seem to have a different hunting strategy. They don't bother with the slugs and snails and frogs, they are on the lookout for larger prey. They move slowly into position, wait for their victim to pop its head out, and strike down from above. Rodents seem to be on the menu today. The birds are a good 100 to 150 meters away from me and are small in the frame, but the animal detection of the Z9 can still pick up the head sometimes and finds the body when it cannot, but due to the heat waves it does hunt a bit when it loses the eyes or the head. This fellow is busy eradicating a whole family, picking them off one by one and grouping them down literally still kicking. It drops the first one but quickly picks it up again and without wasting time just swallows it while the poor guy is still moving. Turns around and does it again less than 5 seconds later. Seeing this, I am really happy I was not born a rodent around these places.
But no matter what fancy gear you use, the basic laws of photography still apply. As the sun is getting stronger, heat waves appear and mess up the footage without mercy. The almost 2000 mm focal lengths and the busy crop fields in the background just make it worse. No way around it. The only fix is to find my subjects earlier in the morning and be there for sunrise to catch the best light. It is clear that using the 2.3 times crop of the 4K120 recording mode is not a fix for distant subjects. The only solution is to get closer somehow. I tried to go back to them the next day to get better footage without the heat waves, but they seemed to have started their migration and were nowhere to be found. Well, until next year then. Since the filming of distant subjects didn't work out that well, I moved on from the open farmlands to my local forests and resorted back to my favorite birds, woodpeckers and nuthatches. These birds are lightning fast on their feet and just darting around when flying. The Z9 should come in handy in this situation with the crop factor giving me a 1150mm focal length on the 200-500. to It is impossible to film these birds with a tripod as they often move up tree trunks in a helical pass and do not stay in one place. Jumping from tree to tree they are always on the move and a tripod will just get in the way. All the footage here is slowed down from 120 frames per second video. Without this it is hard to enjoy watching these birds. This nuthatch is doing what is called caching. They hide seeds for the winter in the tree bark or in the ground, can remember these places and use them during the harshest times in winter. They are also known to wedge larger food items into cracks and pan them with their bill until it breaks. They can hang upside down and descend headfirst on tree trunks, which gives them this unmistakable silhouette. Another one of my favorites is the tree creeper. This bird species is feeding on insects and uses its curved bill to pick them from the crevices of the tree bark. It cannot climb down trees headfirst like the nuthatch, so it starts at the bottom of a tree and works its way up searching for food. The female usually forages on the upper part of tree trunks, while the male uses the lower parts. The Z9 worked wonders for me while filming these small birds. The autofocus almost never lost them. I could easily get around the terrain and handhold my lens, even while looking up at angles that would not have been possible if the lens was on a tripod. Following the quick movements of these birds would also have been impossible. The 2.3x crop in 4K allowed me to get close-up shots of fairly distant birds too. I am sure that with the Nikkor Z100-400 or the new 400 f4.5 or the 500PF lens, the Z9 is the best wildlife hybrid camera for videography right now. And last but not least, a juvenile European green woodpecker. You can see that it is a juvenile as its colors are not fully developed. The face does not have the black and the top of the head is just showing a bit of the red cap these birds have when fully grown. I am not sure whether this arthropod, most likely a harvestman, is lucky it was not eaten or unlucky for being kicked off the tree. Here the visible vibration of the neck signals the long sticky tongue being made use of to fish out an insect of the cavity. All these details are a good showcase for the quality of the 4K 120 frame video capture. After taking a good long look at the neighborhood, having found the next tree to forage, 
Our bird does the usual checklist, takes a dump and then flies off. Thank you for watching, do not forget to like and subscribe. See you again, bye!